I just barely discovered something absolutely fascinating that almost nobody seems to know about, and that's with the water heater here. This little yellow sticker that most of us ignore, if you peel this up and look at the back of it, it actually has a pre-programmed death date or expiration date for your water heater. It's crazy, so I started calling my friends and said, look at yours, peel that thing up and see what the expiration date on yours is. And for all of us, it was actually the same thing. It was 3 a.m. on a Friday night, over the Christmas break while all of your family is staying at your house. That's when it's gonna die. Now I am kidding about the little expiration date on here. That doesn't exist, that's not a real thing. But don't you agree that the water heaters only go out at the worst times? It's always in the middle of winter. It's always when things are just, you know, there's a million things going on and it doesn't die a quiet death. It's going to leak under your floors. It's gonna ruin some carpet and some drywall and some baseboards and anything else that it can get to and spray all over the place. The fact is most water heaters are gonna last between eight and 12 years. It's not a very long lifespan to have that big mess that's gonna be on your hands. And in fact, we're gonna do a giveaway down in the comment section below. I wanna hear your stories for when your water heater went out at the worst possible time or in the most explosive and terrific way. If you have one of the top three stories with the most likes on your comment, then we'll give away some prizes that we'll talk about at the end of the video. Now, most water heaters are actually gonna be on the shorter side of that eight to 12 years if no maintenance takes place. Besides the quality of the water where you live, there are really two big factors that play into how long your water heater is going to last. And both of those come down to maintenance. The first thing is that you should be flushing your water heater every six to 12 months. That's the manufacturer's recommendation and probably most nobody does that. And really, I can't blame you. I don't do it myself. I think almost nobody actually flushes their water heater every six to 12 months. A lot of people don't know that you're even supposed to. Now, the second thing has to do with the anode rod. When I asked my viewers in a community poll, I was not surprised by the answers I got as to how often do you change your anode rod? The number one response, what the heck is an anode rod? That sounds kind of weird and maybe it is. So this is something that most people don't ever change because they don't know what it is. That's the majority of people. So you're definitely not alone if you're not even familiar with an anode rod. Now, 31% said, I know what it is. I just don't ever touch it. And that's most people who know what an anode rod is. Then we'd get down to 4% that said, I change it every five to 10 years maybe. So that's a very small number. And then the elite, the elect, the chosen few, 7% of you. Now granted, this is a subset. This is 7% of people who are already somewhat familiar with DIY, who are subscribed to my channel. Those of you who said, I actually do change it every three to five years. I would guess that on average across the United States at least, maybe Canada as well, we probably get one or 2% of people to actually change it on a regular basis, realistically. Kind of mind blowing, but really it's the biggest factor that will determine how long your water heater is gonna last before you have one of those magnificent blowouts. Most anode rods fall into one of two categories. There are multiple, but two are by far and large the most popular. And the first one is a magnesium alloy anode rod. And the second one is an aluminum alloy anode rod. Now your water heater will typically come with the magnesium rod. That's what came in the water heater that I've got and most likely in the one that you have as well. Now there are some pretty huge differences between these, but they both have a lot of similarities as well. The magnesium one is gonna be a lot less expensive, but it's also gonna get eaten up faster. The whole process or job that this thing has is to be a sacrificial anode rod. Its job is to get eaten away, to be deteriorated by the water that's coming into your water supply so that the water is not attacking your water heater itself because that's what will eventually cause its demise. Now to give you an example of this, I actually did a water heater replacement at my buddy's house and take a look at what happened afterward when we opened up his old water heater to see the status of the anode rod. Keep in mind, it started out looking like this, nice and thick, this is about one inch thick, and then it ended up with absolutely nothing left, right down to the steel rod that supports all of the alloy around it. Pretty bad. Once your sacrificial anode rod has been eaten up, there's really nothing for the water to attack at that point, except for the water heater itself, and that's what's gonna cause it to fail. Now the aluminum anode rods, they have their own set of benefits. These ones are a little bit better at getting rid of that sulfur smell, and that's the rotten egg smell that you sometimes get in your water, but it's still not going to attack it all the way. It's just gonna help. The other thing with aluminum is they do tend to last a bit longer, but they also tend to be more expensive. Every once in a while, I kind of get to be the hero in these videos because I find really cool products that I get to introduce to people, and I think most people don't know about this option. I know I didn't, and I've done a lot of work with water heaters in the past. So this is the thing you clicked on from the thumbnail, right? This funny looking little thing is an anode rod, but not just any anode rod. This is a powered anode rod by a company called Coroprotec. 
Now they reached out to me and again, full disclosure, this is a sponsored video, but I'm happy to put this out there because this is such a cool product. If you look at the box here, there's a few things you're gonna notice. Number one, it says it eliminates the sulfur smell. This doesn't just reduce that rotten egg smell, it gets rid of it. Number two, stops corrosion. That lime scale buildup that you get at the bottom of the tank, that that's why it actually needs flushing on a regular basis, this gets rid of it. This is basically your one-stop fix for dealing with maintenance on your water heater. And the best part, 20 year warranty. That's insane. Basically, if you can put this thing in your water heater, then you just bought yourself 20 years of not having to deal with your water heater. And I think that is an absolute win. So the reason this little guy works is because it's a powered anode rod. It uses electricity, and by the way, a teeny tiny amount of electricity to do the work that these regular aluminum and magnesium anode rods just can't get done. This thing actually costs about $2.80 a year to power. So that's less than a quarter a month and it just doesn't need to be touched once you've got it installed. So the best part is you can actually take this thing and install it in your existing water heater. You don't need to get a new water heater to do this. You can just take the old one out and I'll give you some tips on how to do that and drop this one in, plug it in and you're good to go. At that point, really the only thing you need to do is make sure the green LED light is on on the power supply. And for whatever reason, the green LED light, it is not subtle. There are literally no lights on in this room. It's just this one little green LED. So yeah, I think you'll know if it's on and if it's working. So cost, you're probably wondering about cost. I know I was. These guys, the regular anode rods, typically I found some for as cheap as 30 bucks at Home Depot or on Amazon. And most of the time they're in the 40 to 60 or $70 range, depending on what kind you get and the brand and that sort of thing. So they're not that expensive. They just are a real pain to maintain. Now, as far as the Coral Protect, that one is definitely more, but it's a one and done sort of deal. So the Coral Protect here costs $160, and this is for the 40 to 89 gallon range, which is gonna be most houses in the United States. And put this thing in, 20 years, and you're good. In my opinion, 100% worth it to not have to deal with it. I know that when I put this thing in, by the end of the day, when I've got this thing installed, I am done dealing with water heater issues and I don't have to worry about those Christmas catastrophes at least for another couple of decades. As I mentioned before, you do not have to uninstall or replace your water heater to do this. So I'm gonna walk you through a few tips to have a successful anode rod replacement so that you don't make this face like I had to. Tip number one is use a six-sided socket. Don't use the 12 point socket because it's more likely to strip and once it starts to strip, it's more likely to keep stripping and that's bad news and will cause a lot of the issues that we're seeing here. I'll put a link in the description for one that I recommend that's got good reviews and has held up well. This is a six sided socket and they only cost about 13 bucks. Tip number two is avoid spinning. That's one of the biggest issues with anode rod. When you're trying to remove it, it just spins the entire tank. That could spin your water lines, that could spin your flue, and that could spin anything else that's attached to it as far as gas lines or electrical. So in order to secure that and make sure it doesn't spin, I recommend using some tie down straps. Now, if you live in an area like me, I live in Utah, and we have tie down straps built into the house by code. They have to, they're earthquake straps. So we can use those to hold everything in place. But if you don't have that, which a lot of you won't, then just use some tie down straps that you find for trucks typically. And then you can actually prop it up against like the actual buckle of the tie down strap up against the wall. Make sure to put some protection on there so it doesn't scuff it up. And then that will keep everything from twisting on you while you're trying to loosen that stubborn, stubborn anode rod. Once you've got that six sided socket and you've secured your water heater in place to make sure it doesn't spin anymore, you're ready to actually replace the anode rod. So the best way to do this is to make sure to shut off your cold water supply. I've actually installed a cold water supply valve right next to my water heater, but most don't have that. So you might have to shut off the main water for your house. And then we're gonna also shut down the hot water and then we're gonna turn the thing off. If you've got an electric water heater, that's flipping off the circuit breaker to make sure that that's not on. And if you've got a gas water heater like mine, set it to off or pilot. From there, we're gonna hook up a hose so that we can drain from the lower drain on there and get just maybe a couple of gallons of water out of it. And this is gonna be really hot water, so be careful with this for sure. And then you can use a slotted screwdriver to open up the valve carefully and start letting some of that water out. Now, if it's not coming out like it should, if it seems like it's stuck, that might be an issue with your temperature and pressure release valve, this guy up here. So go ahead and very carefully and slowly 
release that a little at a time until the water starts flowing freely. Get a couple of gallons out, and that's really all you need to do for this job. We do not need to drain or empty the entire thing. Now we grab our socket and our ratchet, and I've actually got a torque wrench here. Now these are actually not as expensive as I thought. I bought this for another project, but these were 57 bucks, and this thing is a beast. Gives you tons of leverage, and like I say, 57 bucks on Amazon, so I'll put links to that in the description below, but this one worked perfectly for me, especially with this newer one that I was replacing. So just open that thing up, and we're moving counterclockwise to release it. And then you've got your new powered anode rod at the ready. With that, you can wrap it with Teflon tape. Make sure to give it at least a few wraps around there. Thread it in, make sure it's nice and snug. And then all you have to do from that point is to plug in the terminal on top, and then we need the ground to be attached to one of the screws on the outer shell of the water heater. With everything connected, all that's left to do is plug in your power and you should get that super bright glowing burn your retinas green LED going. And like I say, as long as you see that bright green light, you know you're in business and your water heater is protected. Now in my case, I have a 40 gallon water tank. There are six people in my house, almost all of which are adults, four of us are adults. I've got three teenage daughters and the 40 gallons just not keeping up. So I opted to go ahead and swap this out for a nicer water heater. I happen to get a killer deal on this one, 450 bucks. So I went ahead and added that 50 gallon one in and I'm not gonna go through all of the details of this because I have a whole nother video that you can check out that explains how to replace your water heater in just 10 simple steps. So once I got that connected and have the new powered anode rod from Coroprotec in there, I am good to go. I am done. I don't have to worry about my water heater for 20 plus years and I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Now Coroprotec, if you're listening, can you make it so that I never have to come into this room? Can you maybe come out with a powered air filter for my furnace and air conditioning system? That would be nice. I'm still coming in here on a regular basis to change that out, but that takes me a minute or two. This thing is just a pain in the butt. At least it was. I'm all done with that. Now I did mention that we have a few giveaways to do for your stories in the comments, whichever ones get the most likes. Coroprotec has generously offered to give away three of the powered anode rods to those individuals who win those three most liked comments. So be sure to check that out down below, put a like next to the one you enjoy the most, or share your story if you've got one as well. Now keep in mind, uh, anode rods do come in different varieties from Coral Protect. So you can get one for your RV, you can get one for commercial use, and you can get one for residential use. Whatever type of anode rod you need, they've got you covered. Now remember, if you're interested in getting your water heater replaced altogether, it is very much a project that you can do yourself. You may have to pull a permit for it, make sure you do your homework on it, but I have broken that down into 10 easy steps that you can check out right here. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.